Mike Tolmer? Here. Bruce Galaducci? Here. William Henderson? Here. Joe Squasma? Here. Joe Verducci? Here. Nino Petroselli? Here. Virginia Schneider? Here. Eddie Copeland? Here. Thomas McDermott? Lori Collins? Here. Chad King? Here. Joe Seitz? And Bill Chilio? Here. Um, I think the easiest thing to do in actuality is the synopsis that I wrote regarding the budget kind of touches on the things um, that were different or increased or decreased. So maybe if I read that and then stop and uh, you know when we're going through the taxes and when I talk about that and then ask if there are any questions instead of going through all the line items and driving everybody crazy with that. Okay. First. Okay. All right. Okay. General fund. The 2019 general fund budget proposes no tax increase, but it continues to split the millage of 10 mills for land and six and a half for buildings. The $12,000 homestead exemption remains in place for qualified homeowners. The real estate tax current line item has been decreased due to, the, due to the exonerations and reassessments that occurred in 2018. And if you take a look at the rear of your general fund budget, I showed you what I get from Jordan Tax. It, it's attached. And that gives you um, the, the real numbers as far as you know, the, uh, the real estate taxes, the exonerations, um, the exclusions, the taxable valuation, the tax of face discount, whatever. And total taxes at discount are 1,776,424.34. So I had 1,779,727 budgeted for 2018. Now there were some exonerations and some uh, assessment uh, changes, but not that many. So I took it down to 1740896 and I know that's hopeful as far as just having 30000 outstanding, but hopefully that's all we'll have. So. What's outstanding so far this year? I think it's like 60, 70. Yeah. Yes. And in 2017, there's still 42000 2017 and about there's about 70 all right now so so I took it down a little okay and as far as as far as the uh, the property taxes go does anybody have any questions with that section as far as lien face lien penalties that have to be in tax it's very hard to tell what we're going to get from them it, it's dependent upon the sale of houses because once it goes to Jordan tax, honestly, if a house isn't sold, it's just lost. So, um, you know, that's a problem for us, and that's what we're going to try to address um, yeah. uh, these delinquencies and some of these uh, houses that are just sitting and properties, dead properties. Yeah, we view, view the yes. dead properties to, to get them off the wall. Right, right, and try to do something with them as far as getting back on the tax rolls. Yes. So, okay, as far as uh, um, local enabling taxes, revenues, the earned income tax collections have become steady with the changeover to the PSD numbers and the Act 32 withholding requirements implemented in 2012. Jordan Tax is now in the process of completing their reviews of the accounts to ensure correct communities are credited, lessening the need for reimbursements down the road. And we're seeing that now prior years used to be up when they first started the PSD numbers and now they're down because they're catching them before they're going to the wrong communities. Um, we're seeing the positive impacts of this new collection procedure with the highest anticipated earned income tax revenues budgeted in years at 528,435. <clears throat> the business privilege and mercantile, which are in the same section, the local enabling taxes, and local service taxes continue to be collected by Jordan. The BP and Mercantile tax collections have experienced a slight decrease in collections. 
We will contact Jordan Tax to review the collections of 2018. Line item 310-510, local services taxes have been budgeted again, reflecting the $52 implemented a few years ago. We did that a few years ago. You're exempt if you make $12,000 or less. We receive $47, and the school district receives five. That, that's all the same. And uh, we're, we're doing fine on that one. I took a look at uh, last year and what we received in BP and Mercantile in December. And it was approximately 10,000 in BP and approximately 5,000 in Mercantile, which won't bring us to where we anticipated we should be. So we'll be talking to Jordan Tax about that. <clears throat> and when we go down to licenses and permits, um, everything is pretty much the same there. The only thing that you're going to see at 01-320-102 building permits for the past couple of years, we've been budgeting a large amount, thinking that Dr. Roy was going to be able to build his building. We had a large um, income from the building permit coming in, and I don't think that's going to come to fruition. So I've taken it way down to $4,000, which is normally where we are um, this time of year. So when you flip to the next page, as far as the magistrate, state police, non-moving, County Dogs and DUI program. Uh, the DUI comes from the county. State police send us um, the monies from uh, 33102. Non moving or the police uh, with the non moving citations. Magistrate is uh, uh, the uh, what's sent down to the magistrate as far as uh, tickets that the police write as far as, uh, as what we, the borough, collect. So, and that's all the police department. So, that's all the revenues that they're bringing in. As far as uh, fund interest, it has increased due to the increase in interest rates experienced in 2018. And then when you go down the line, foreign fire insurance revenues have been budgeted at 22,718, reflecting amounts received in 2018. The state pension aid, which you drop down to state payments at 356,105, has been budgeted the same as the amount received in 2018. They vary a bit, but you don't know what the uh, what the per unit value is as far as state pension aid until August of next year. But they're usually around 4,400. They they just don't, they vary a little bit, but not that much. As far as winter storm reimbursement, we don't budget for that. PennDOT reimburses us if we have an exceptionally bad winter. 1% uh, sales tax, um, that's the, uh, our portion of the 7% uh, uh, sales tax, and uh, that has been uh, pretty steady this year, and um, I anticipate that we're actually going to be over budget this year, because I think um, as of today, I took a look at it, and we're, um, for December, uh, I think we have to meet $9,000, and, and we normally get between 10 and 13 a month, so. Any questions about that? <clears throat> um, I did want to bring up, and I did not bring this up when we were in the Finance Committee meeting, um, and I did um, Calculate. I did have the numbers in the budget as far as what we're anticipated to receive for pension aid, and I did have the numbers that we have to pay for the minimum municipal obligations in the expenditure side. Um, but what I didn't give you was we will be uh, spending $7,459 in general fund monies to cover the police pension if we get what I, I have uh, anticipated that we're going to get for state pension aid. You mean that shortage? Yes. So it's it's already it's already locked in here, but I just didn't mention it at, at the finance committee meeting. And the actuary has completed a study of the pension fund and recommends the police pension withholding be raised to eight percent. We did an ordinance for that last meeting, beginning January two thousand nineteen. That's maximum permitted by Act six hundred. As far as uh, when you go down to charges for services, well, um, line item 38101, that's miscellaneous insurance reimbursements, reflects an estimate of workers' comp and general liability insurance pooled refunds of $70,000. We normally um, always get at least 70000 
These refunds are calculations of experience modifiers, wage, wages, and claims within the past eight years. The transit shelter line item 380-106 has been decreased due to the decrease in shelters to six and the rate for shelter to 500. We signed that agreement on, uh, on November 12th. Does anybody have any questions regarding that section? Okay, as far as section contributions and donations, I don't have anything in here regarding that. And that's just uh, miscellaneous contributions to Community Day. Um, police overtime reimbursement, and that's when they work outside of the borough and we bill the uh, entity that they worked in and then we're reimbursed. So that's the line item 387103. And health savings account reimbursement, that's 15% of the deductibles that the employees pay. And once a month, I transfer that from the payroll fund to the general fund. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's uh, 425, it's 15% of 3,000 uh, for family and 15% of uh, 1,500 for singles. So it's 225 and 450. Um, other financing sources, the sanitary sewer wage reimbursement, public works and administration um, that reflects clerical and public works wages. Um, Jordan tax is still the most economical wage <coughs> of 43 cents per bill plus postage, but the administrative office assists with collections prior to Jordan tax placing the lien on the properties. Per Act 32, all collection costs will be passed on to the delinquent account owner. We will continue the quarterly garbage billing as this task is almost time consuming, thus not as costly to remain in house. Clerical wages have also been calculated and charged to the garbage fund line item 39107. Public works wages have been removed from line item 39106. I took a look at that, and uh, as far as public works wages and garbage, um, there were always wages reimbursed from the garbage fund to that line item, and honestly, the public works department only picks up garbage in our parks and <laughs> in, on our main streets, so I really couldn't see the reasoning behind doing that and, and putting more stress on the garbage fund. So I took that out and took it to zero. And then there are no refunds on prior year tax expenditures. As far as expenses go, <coughs> legislative body, um, expenditures within the 400 count, accounts remain steady with a 2.5% wage increase included for all full-time employees. There are no noticeable changes in the administration budget proposed for the new year. It's just um, what we need to do our work and um, nothing extra. There are no noticeable changes in the financial administration or tax collection line items for the budget year 2019 either. Um, the auditing services just went up a bit. The rest is the same. And tax, coll tax collection also is just covering the costs of what uh, it costs San Marie to collect taxes here. And there's nothing uh, um, out of the ordinary in these line items either. Does anybody have any questions on that? Okay, as far as the legal line item, I continued that at $45,000 with a $500 per retainer for the, per month. Okay, the personal personnel um, administration line item, uh, 406156, that's our hospitalization or medical insurance, reflects a 2% two two decrease in premiums. Vision and dental plans have experienced no change in premiums in 2019. The employees have been given a choice to utilize Highmark or UPMC with our current plan. Coverage for both plans are the same. With the same premiums charged, employees will continue to contribute 15% of their deductible, as I just said. <clears throat> as far as line item 387104, workers' compensation premiums for firefighter, firefighters have remained constant, and so have our workers' comp premiums for um, the rest of the employees in the building. The State Workers Insurance Fund is the only entity that will insure the fire department due to increased claims experience since the attacks on 9-11. And as I said, the workers' comfort for our own place remains the same. Anybody for anything there? You'll also notice the hospitalization in the major medical. We had some, um, we had some married 
um, that went to single, some uh, children that came off the plans and then took the took the uh, the employee to single. So that that makes a good difference between it six hundred and some dollars and twelve hundred a year or a month. So okay, next we have data processing. Line item 407312 includes an $8,000 expenditure for web support and text messaging management. Line item 407750 has been increased in anticipation for the need of new towers and administrative offices. We're not looking at monitors or um, um, anything but the, the towers. They're approximately six years old and we won't get them if they don't go bad, but we are anticipating, um, they're moving very slow, so I'm anticipating that we're going to have some issues with them. If you're on your internet connection, remember there was an issue when the flood happened? Yeah, we got that all. Okay. Yeah, we, yeah, we got that all. <coughs> okay, line item 407751, um, newsletter slash marketing. We changed that because we're going to ex explore assistance in the sharing of information in a real time manner. Okay, engineering. The engineering line item continues at $45,000 with a $200 per month retainer. Line item 408124, that's new. Flood mitigation in the amount of $15,000 has been added to reflect engineering work to be done on unjust hazard mitigation projects. And we have never had that before, but with the flood and the work that we're doing to try to get ready, um, things ready for the DEP, um, we're going to be spending more on engineering. Okay. Buildings, as far as buildings go, um, there's nothing really um, that's changed as far as the buildings go until you go down to 01409750. And that um, is a demolition line item which has been added in anticipation of demolishing the building adjacent to the borough building next door. The finance committee was talking and the building is looking a little bad and um, hopefully we can take it down for that one. One final training mission. Hi, yeah. Mitch. We actually have a new store wants to use it before it actually comes down because they want to partially collapse <coughs> it and then have a <coughs> training in it. That might help with the price. Yeah, they'll, do, they'll, they'll actually make it partially collapse and then they do an actual training in it. Yeah. So, similar to what happened out in Washington County when the building came down. Yeah. Uh, they, they talked to me before that happened, but they wanted to do a training before you guys tear it down where they make part, part of it collapse up and they go in and do the actual training. So, something like, if anything, just coordinate the last note. Yeah. Yes, we certainly will. That's something we'd have to. Uh, well, actually, we can. We'll just be able to do our piece for that because um, it's not going to be over eighteen thousand. So hopefully. Okay, the police section line items with the police department reflect a two point five percent wage increase per the collective bargaining agreement. Line item four ten seven sixty four, which is on this, the next page, includes the purchase of new body armor for the officers. And additional line items within the police department remain constant. I do believe there is one change that the, the chief has requested. Yeah, line item 101 01410127 part time police officers. Um, talking with the chief, he's provided some data with a five year average of missed shifts uh, that he's covered with uh, part time. It basically equates to about five shifts a week. And he, he believes going forward with that amount of missed time that six shifts a week would, would lessen the stress on the department. And so we're looking at, right now we're budgeted at $42,000 for that. Um, if we can get, you know, it's, we're not talking a ton of money, but if we get up to 47000 it's about $5,000, um, it would contribute to not only the, the missed shifts, but also equate to the court time for... Right, um, because the part-time line item, the, the part-timers court time, um, and their uniforms come out of that one line and they don't have separate uniform allowance or separate court time allowance. Also, it's, we, I did a projection of how many shifts we're going to have to cover possibly in 2019 
the number comes out close to 513 shifts. This wouldn't touch that number, but it would get me up in the area of um, at least 312 to 330 shifts we could cover out of those 513. And uh, with that, we help it tremendously is obviously saving on the overtime, but it allows me to keep two guys on duty most of the time rather than having to short some of the shifts. So do we, do we need to make any more comment about it? Well, as far as you guys can talk about it, but um, you don't have to make motion or anything. It's just we're, we're working on, you know, just making changes where you see mm -hmm. it and whatever. So if everybody's okay with that, I can mark it and then okay. I can make changes. That's fine with me. Yeah. Well, Chief, can you explain the, the body armor aspect? Yes, every five years um, our body armor expires. And uh, we're in our fifth year. Our, our body armor all expires, I believe, in March of the upcoming year. So in order to have the new body armor ready to go, we're going to have to order it before the end of this year. Obviously, then we'll pay for it next year. But um, it's the expiration dates are on all of our vests, and we all try to be uniform when we get them. Um, I have a few exceptions where one of my part-time officers is full-time in Heidelberg, so they'll buy his vest for him in Heidelberg. The other part-time officer, prior to him leaving his full-time job at McDonald, purchased a brand new vest. So there's two guys we don't have to cover for that. Um, but we don't want guys out there with expired body armor. That would be an issue for insurance and also something I wouldn't want to explain if something were to happen. Um, but we will also get a portion of that reimbursed from the Bulletproof Vest Program um, to grant that we get every five years when we get the vest. I believe it covers close to 50% of the cost, but it takes about nine months for that grant to go through because you can't apply for it unless it's the fiscal year that you buy the vest. So it's not something you can do in advance. You have to apply for it next year when we get the vest. So what is, how many body armor does that cover? 10? That covers nine of the 11 officers. We're looking probably about $1,100 per officer for a bulletproof vest. Are you all custom? Um, yes, we each get fitted. And some guys wear them on the outside. I still wear, a couple of us still wear it underneath the shirt. But that's the estimate I got from, from our body armor man, Charlie Ritchie, that uh, that's pretty much the going rate right for the top vest. Me. Um, the other issue I know um, Lori brought up on the borough side about their servers and their computer systems. We were it was recommended we actually get a new server last year, but we went through another year, hoping we can get through another year and get them in 2020. Um, but there is a chance ours could go at any time, and the problem with it is being so it's so old that if something goes wrong with it, it can't be repaired. We'd have to get a new one altogether. But we're not having issues with anything running slow, so I figure use it until it doesn't work anymore. That can be. What next type weight loss is that? Chief? Probably somewhere around thirty-five hundred. When the quote you got was just for a server. Um, so three towers. Three towers. Mm -hmm. um, server probably be somewhere in the area thirty-five hundred. I think that's a good estimate if it were to go. Maybe we should put it in there just like we did. Yeah. That way, if if it goes, the money's there to purchase a new one. If it doesn't, it just won't be spent. If you give me till tomorrow and call RCS and get an exact number, I'm sure, if need be. But I think 3,500 is probably a close number to that. Just put that. I'll just put that. Okay. Oh, no. You have to put for ours, right? Yeah, ours was, um, for the three towers, ours was $2,800. So. Are you putting it under yours or under theirs? Under theirs. Everything that, stays separate. Is that 410 so. 205? Chief, is that have anything to do with your vehicle computers too? No, that's a separation. Um, those, those are okay. They're okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll put it in 410 205. Plus 35. So that Anything else, Chief? Okay. <laughs> okay, the next one is the fire department. As far as the fire goes, um, everything is steady um, in their line items. The supplies are still at 10.5.
The foreign fire insurance light item is, of course, reflective of the disbursement received from the state. Light, line item 411-321 continues at $75,000 to cover costs of the ladder truck. So that's that's all we have there. And then, of course, we pay the fire, hyd fire hydrants out of, uh, out of that 411-451 uh, line item. Chief, how long have you had that fire truck? Is it three or four years now? 2015? 15 is three years. Seems longer than that. Okay, um, as far as uh, as far as zoning goes, there's nothing uh, really that stands out in zoning um, except for building inspection. As you'll see, um, the uh, forty-three thousand dollars that we budgeted in the revenue side. We, we have to pay out 80% of that to the building inspection underwriters. So, of course, I offset that in the expenditure side. So, building inspection is at 4000 also. And um, as far as postage, zoning appeals, stenographer, we haven't had any zoning hearings this year. In fact, I just got a request for one today, so that will be our only one, um, which kind of is showing that our zoning... Um, that our zoning code is doing what it's supposed to, but not making it too hard on people to move forward with things because this is the first year that we've really not had any. Good. So, um, planning commission. Um, as far as advertising and printing, I just put two hundred fifty dollars there in consulting fees. Um, I put five thousand dollars there just because we have always had a planning consultant um, on staff or you know, a, a, an outside consultant there to answer questions for us, to uh, give some advice, those types of things. Um, I don't know if uh, you plan on moving forward with her in any other aspect, but I just, uh, the Finance Committee, and then I agreed that 5,000 was a good number there. So anybody has any comments? Well, the only thing to move to rehire her and more money, it's dependent if a council wants to agree to do all this change that we hear from the public or leave that alone or adding, that would be the only thing I, I would say that you would need to consult otherwise. At this point, <coughs> as we got cooking, then that's my idea. If we think to incorporate some of the comment, then you have no choice. <coughs> Yeah. Well, as far as the plan goes, either the plan is going to be accepted or not, I think. Um, I don't think that you can cut the plan up as far as it'll, no. I think council will either accept it as it is or um, or decline it and um, yeah. move forward with you know some of the hazard mitigation work that's going to be done. Um, but as far as, if, if council accepts it, um, as far as us moving forward with that plan, it really would be hazard mitigation grants and things like that that don't involve the planning consultant at this time. So it would be initial work yes. as far as that goes anyway. So, um, I mean, you can, you can help it if you want to, but I kind of thought that was pretty safe. We did the first say we did the phases this year, so one, two and three are yeah. done. Correct. Yeah, so at this point we didn't plan on moving forward to anything else. Yeah, until we see if we get more. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. All right. I agree. All right. Okay. All right. Flip the page. Health and welfare and control contract that's four hundred and twenty dollars a month and that remains the same. And then we get into Wastewater collection and public works, and I have <coughs> when through this part of the budget, you're going to find public works wages are spread out through all of the line items. Um, I can actually give you, if you're interested, total total wages for public works are $278,470.40. So, um, 
So um, those wages two seventy eight four seventy forty. And those are spread throughout the rest of the budget. Okay, as far as the Public Works Department, it reflects a wage increase of 2.5%. There's no out of the ordinary expenses proposed, and um, our fleet is okay. Um, I, we're going to have to take a look at it in a few years to You're see what we need to do. And what we need. With some different equipment, so. Yeah. So, as we get through, and maybe even getting rid of a truck or two, I don't know. So, um, but that's not included in, in this year's budget. So, as far as highway snow and ice, um, line items 432 to 245 reflect our 125% quantity salt purchase for the year at the contract price of $70.93 per ton. I've reserved 750 tons with 80% of the tonnage required to be purchased. I budgeted for 125% should we have a severe winter this year. We've already, uh, we've already bought 100 tons um, this month. So. It might go to carriage then under time. Might. Well, we have to buy. Um, yeah. yeah. We have to buy. Um, so oh, yeah, but you're on the uh, well, 80%. Yeah. yeah, we have to buy 80% of seven. Exactly. Yeah. And we can buy up to 900 tons at yeah. 79 to 3. We have a pretty good stock now. We're it's small. full right now. Yeah, the 100 ton filled us up. Right. And um, that's where we like to be. And then as the storms come, what we use, we then refurbish it so that we're always full. Yeah. Um, I don't know if she told you from the car, but I guess they've been having issues getting supply because a line caved in or something like that up in the area. So they said order in advance if it starts getting a little bit low, maybe. Um, yeah. If we use 50 tons, I order 50 tons. Yeah. So we never let ours get low to where we're panicking. So. That's good. Yeah. Okay, um, as far as street sign paint materials, that's just um, pretty much the same as last year, although uh, we used the, the paint, but we didn't use a lot of the, we didn't replace a lot of street signs because of the expenses with the flood, so um, we'll probably be using that entire line this year. Okay, line item 436, Storm Sewer MS4 permit. That's been budgeted again at $50,000 as we must still comply with the federal mandates regarding MS4 permits and operations and maintenance plans, which are in full swing at this time. As you remember, last year we were audited by the DEP, <coughs> and um, they'll be coming in probably every couple of years and monitoring what we're doing with our MS4. So it's just like the consent order for the sanitary sewer lines. Um, we have to continue work and keep reporting. Okay, line item 437, 251, vehicle repair and maintenance. I upped that from $18,000 last year to $25,000, just in anticipation of, um, we had back, backhoe work done this year, and, um, you know, in, in anticipation of, um, it getting older and uh, having to put some more money into it, so just up to a uh, small amount. Highway and bridge repair line items 438 100 and 438 210 have been increased as no alleys were paved in 2018 due to the flood. The actual street and alley repairs wages. Um, uh, we are at 77000 this year, I budgeted eighty, but that also includes when the guys are out doing uh, catch basins and things, they report that on streets and alleys. So that's why you'll see that, um, that the wages being higher, even though we didn't do any paving um, of alleys. Okay, as far as park expenditures go, they've been budgeted to maintain services throughout the year. The Chargers Park Comprehensive Plan has been put on hold due to the, un 
due to the unanticipated expenses in 2018. Line item 454-387, which is on the next page, has been budgeted as the borough's share of the CDBG grant from the block and run restroom upgrades. We got the CDBG grant for the Tartarus Park restroom upgrades this year, and they should be starting on those now. I don't know if, they, if they're doing anything or not, but they should be starting on those now. And um, next year we've applied for McLaughlin, and as far as, uh, I think it was 40,000, 40, and we'd have to pay $5,000 of that. So um, that I put that in that line item, $5,500. We can for uh, cameras. We cameras are, are in the line item um, 454 210 maintenance supplies. Okay. Okay. It was $8,000 budget there. Okay. Line item 457 361. Um, it has been increased to 2750 <coughs> and our public works department is uh, pretty handy and saving us money. We took a look at some of the, the uh, Christmas light candle displays and no, they're bows, not candles, um, were damaged in the flood. Um, the cheapest ones that you can get are approximately $285 each, which comes to, we have 43 holes, so that's $12,000. So we said, no, we can't do that. So talked about it with Public Works, and um, was determined that the frame was still good. Um, I think Bill went over and talked to uh, the gentleman from the uh, powder, coating. powder coating, and their Public Works taking all the lights off, their powder coating, gonna put the lights back on, and we're gonna spray paint the bows. And for 2500 bucks, we'll have 14 more years of bows up. So, you know. I think we're going to put the newer lights on. Yeah, we should, huh? We're going to put newer lights on it instead of the screw balls because they always break. Yeah. So, that won't be ready for this year, of course, but for next year. And as far as the miscellaneous expenditures, um, well, line, the line item for the library, I didn't want to, uh, to skip that, remains at 20000 Okay, as far as the insurance categories go, I usually budget at least um, uh, a few percent increases um, every year in, anti in anticipation of uh, the renewals coming in. Um, I was surprised this year um, I had budgeted $12,760 for the police false arrest insurance, and it, it made a pretty good jump to, four, to $13,130, so I budgeted $14,443 this year. The other ones uh, kind of remain the same, so I just took them up a little bit. And then you've got the MMOs at $483.53 and $483.54. That's what we've got to pay um, to the pension fund. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the general fund. Does anybody have any questions? And I'll make those changes and then I'll send you new copies. And then, as I said, Monday, this will be on the website and it'll be available for um, review at the building also. We we're also talking about doing a presentation on the TV, very similar to the PowerPoint that we tried putting together last year. So we're going to do that. I'll, I'll uh, worry, I'm helping Lori put that together and I'll send it out to everybody for review prior to the meeting. And we'll, we'll put that online too. Yeah. So. Okay, sanitary sewer fund. Alcasan has reported a 7% increase for the next three years. The Finance Committee has recommended no increase in the borough rate for the year 2019. With that being said, all line items in the Sanitary Sewer Fund remain constant, with line item 429, 712 in the amount of 65000 budgeted for Phase 2 of the Backflow Preventer Project, and line item 429, 713 budgeted at 385 147 for level 5 corrections and defects. And there's just a little breakdown um, as if you have any questions regarding um, 
the Alcasan rates, what they bring in, the Alcasan service charge. Um, the borough at no increase at 623 per thousand gallons brings in $620,489. So at, after we're done going through the budget, we'll have to make a motion to um, advertise the public hearing and uh, advertise the ordinance for the increase in rates for Alcasan, not us. So. Is everything okay with the increase? Anybody have any questions on any of the expenditure? On the sewer? The newsletter section, are we going to treat that very similar to the marketing? Yes, yes. I just left that in there. In fact, I'll add newsletter, I'll, I'll add marketing on that too. And we don't even, dependent upon what we do, um, we may not even have to use that line item right. in, in there. So, but I'll, I'll have the word marketing in there, in there also. Okay. And then I just included a copy of the Alpha Sand letter to us. We have state. no choice with the Alpha Sand, right? Right. We, we have to well, increase it. Yes. And we just have a choice as to what we want to do with us. And a, and a uh, correction project for 387000 is a pretty good project. So we can still get a lot done with that. Okay, the next is the garbage fund. It reflects a new contract with Westmoreland Landfill LLC. The contract has been approved for the five years. The Finance Committee has recommended an increase of $3 per quarter or $53. This increase will take us through the contract with no increase needed until 2024. And a pro forma has been provided to reflect this recommendation, which is on page three of the budget. And that is just showing you the expenses, the cash on hand. Um, it's showing a, a, a bad debt expense for, um, for garbage that is not collected. And it's taking you through all the years and showing you at the end of 2023, you're in a deficit of 16,671. I'm pretty much thinking that you probably won't be, but in 2024, of course, there'll be a new contract and then you'll be able to, um, to take a look at that rates again because I'm sure they'll have to go up again. Nothing's going down. And we did not include on uh, the HHW and e-waste because it was so expensive. I talked to our hauler today and he actually told me that that company deals directly with municipalities. So we may be able to even set something up with them um, for our residents uh, and not have to go through the garbage company. So we can take a look at that. Are they switching out like the dumpsters? Everything, yeah, everything. I've been in contact with them. They're having somebody run the route, and um, they're going to be sending letters to everyone. Um, and uh, you know what day? It will probably be, in a, be split two different days for two two different sections of town. Oh, I love Sunday. I love Sunday. I, I love Sundays too. <laughs> I love Sundays too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Monday, the Monday, or the Monday. Yeah. <laughs> But they're going to, uh, we're, we're giving them a list of all our customers and they're going to send out a, a blast mailing and, uh, and giving them their dates and what they need to do and, you know, uh, recognizing that they're a new company and that type of thing. And then we'll put that on our website and on Facebook too. Um, but yeah, I think everybody wishes for Sunday. Okay, so is everybody okay with the $3 increase? And that will be done as a resolution at the December 10th meeting. That doesn't have to be an ordinance, so it, um, I'll do a resolution for that. Okay, Capital Improvement Fund is a holding fund. And I've broken it down. It's the same as last year. Um, the cash on hand is a little different um, because we had used some of the money for the Bower Hill Road project. Um, but as far as it goes, um, $694,773 is the cash on hand, $300,000 for the GEDF grant, $215,512 for the McLaughlin Run grant, which is up in the air right now. I'm not sure what's going on with that. 
3,800 interest. And if we were going to do these projects this year, we would have to transfer 58,259 um, if we were going to do all the projects this year. I'm not recommending that transfer because none of these projects, except except the adaptive lighting and the McLaughlin project, I don't know, but the adaptive lighting is going to be done this year. Um, it's already been bid, so um, but we're we don't have to transfer any monies to balance the fund this year at all. Um, I don't think until 2020 at least. 2019 expenditures include 253 320 for the borough's share of the bridge project and the adaptive lighting. Our share of the adaptive lighting is 53 320. 431024 is the entire McLaughlin Park grant grant project to 15512 is theirs and it's 50 percent match and then the capital project Chartier Street 588 300,000 of that is a grant so that is just that's sitting there just so you know what each item is for and um, you know it'll probably be the same less adaptive lighting next year as far as the liquid fuels fund goes um, we're receiving $150,237.11 in state funding this year. And we budgeted the entire amount for the 2019 pavement maintenance program. We'll review the 219 scope of paving work with Public Works Committee and prepare for a spring bid. Um, usually we can get better prices if we come in for the bid. So. And that's what I have as far as the budget. As far as the wall. Mm -hmm. Pretty quick, we got washed out. Should we put something in consideration of that? Do we? As far as what? Or is there something? There? Well, what is going to what happen as far as hazard mitigation goes? Um, we we have to see which projects um, will come into fruition this okay. year. And uh, I talked to the auditors regarding that, and I, I know we're planning on doing some hazard mitigation projects. We don't know which ones the DEP will approve. Um, we don't have the costing yet. If we're going to do some financing, um, we will have to do that and then add it to the budget at a later date as far as money coming in, the expense, um, the, the interest, that type of thing. And uh, so that would probably be included in one of those projects. Okay. How's the records coming over the uh, to stop for the degrees? <coughs> you the, uh, no, we have to. Um, Gateway is, uh, is getting ready with all the DEP uh, requirements, and then it, it, goes, it goes down to them. And then once they approve it, then we have to make a determination. And uh, as far as cost goes, the cost the cost actually we'll know that when it goes down to the DEP for the permits. DEP and conservation district both both have to permit that. Um, permits can take from three months to a year, so that's why I'm saying we don't know which projects will come up first. The back channel might come up first. We have some help with that from the Churches Valley Flood Authority. Um, they earmark some money for that. Um, but we want to open that channel. And the back channel is a working right, so it's not just taking sediment out. So it depends upon which project they approve as to what we'll need. And then we'll go from there. That's why the 15,000 is in there for the engineering because it, a lot of um, a lot of it is going to be engineering and applying for the permits, um, and then once we see what we want to do, then we'll go from there. So the changes will be that we're not going to have it for 2019. Well, no, that's that's not particularly so. I mean, sometimes DEP permits come back in three months, mm -hmm. so then we have to determine how much it's going to be. Our, we are in a position right now with the, we have to spend almost $400,000 on the flood, which took our reserves down to a very, the lowest level since I've been here. We aren't in a position right now to be able to spend any money out of the reserves of which they're pretty much, um, we, we're going to have to look in January and make, make, make sure that we don't need a tax anticipation loan. 
um, that's how far our reserves are down. So we will not be able to take any money out of our reserves to do any of these projects. We're going to have to look to financing, pen best, those types of things um, to do them. So anything we do, we're, gonna, we're going to have to uh, just take that route. We can't, we can't include it in, in the budget. We don't, like, we don't have the money for it. But I know that we need to move forward and it will have to be something that's financed over a period of time that we're able to handle. Okay. Tax and distribution would be, I don't know what kind of interest we're going to get. Yeah. I don't think we're going to need it. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to be okay. But like I said, it makes me uneasy because... That's just because the tax, uh, they don't come in that fast for that thing. Maybe you need the money before that. Well, you know, you have the, from January yeah. to July, you know, you have to cover all the yeah. expenses. Um, right now, we're sitting in an okay place. Um, it depends upon what comes in in December. And, um, you know, this budget is pretty conservative. So there yeah. just isn't a lot of money being spent, which I think, I think will be okay. Well, let's call that tax anticipation a line of credit. And if we need it, we have uh, right. Again. I, you know, it, it's the option is always out there. Sure. If we find ourselves in a position where we feel a little uncomfortable, but I think we'll be okay. Yeah, we're good. Thank you. Yeah, and Nina, you'd be surprised what the rates are on this hand. I bet they're they're not very high. They yeah. get because banks get tax credits and stuff for it, so you won't be able to take advantage. Okay. Of it. It, but like Lori said, there's an equation you have sure. to do. And I plugged in those numbers into the equation, and I think we're going to be all right. Yeah, okay. okay, so what we need to do now is a proposed ordinance number 1005. Um, if you're looking on your um, if you're looking on your laptop, I had uh, put the wrong numbers on the paperwork that I sent you over the computer, so I had to up the numbers by a couple. So this would be proposed ordinance number 105, and um, it is actually all already done and um, is uh, attached, and it's amending the Alcasan rates and um, with no increase. And you can see the breakdown there from the 2018 rates to the 2019 rates. So we need a motion to so advertise that. A second. Okay. The next item is a public hearing advertisement, and we're required to do that um, when we raise the rates um, on the user fee for sanitary sewer. So I scheduled that for Monday, December 10th at 645, and it's 645 because we have a public hearing scheduled for 630. It's already advertised. For the liquor license, it's going to be transferred from Whitaker Borough to here for Ragtop down on the block of Mark Road. So um, it used to be down there. And you know where Shelby uh, Station was? It used to be right. It was, right. it was Ragtop before that and it burned. Well, they want to come back. So um, there's. The same there. people. Hmm? It would be different. I, I think the same people. Yeah. Yeah. So, and why the license is out of Bridgeville? Well, the liquor license that was down at Shelby's, yeah. um, I guess there were some things that happened when okay. the renter left, and there's a lien on that liquor license, so they had to obtain another one. So it's so, not different on there? Uh, no, and, okay. and you have to go through a public hearing, okay. and then there'll be a resolution on the agenda in December, um, just approving it. Okay. So. Make a motion to advertise. Okay. I'll second. Say. Anybody? That's fine. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And then we have proposed ordinance one zero zero six. That's to advertise um, the tax rate and levy, levying borough taxes for the fiscal year 2019 and reenacting all the revenue acts. And as a remark, all rates remain the same. No increases are proposed. No tax increases are proposed. Um, just for the record. Well, I'd like to, uh, do we have to not motion that first? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to say part of the reason why is because of how tight you pushed your belt over the last year. So I commend you for 
Thank you. For everything you did. And I mean, you spent three and a half hours going over everything with the Finance Committee. And very well played. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Motion for the ordinance 1006. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.